Welcome to What's New in BC23 Development, the Hacker Edition. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, I think this has kind of become a tradition that whenever a new version of AL BC Development is coming out twice a year, I do this video where I take you to the list of what's new and then I fire up the old uh, decompiler and we go check inside the belly of the beast to see if there's stuff there that uh, is not on the list because they usually always are. Um, so, and, and this year the list is long, so, uh, or this half year, this release. So we might as well get going straight away. And uh, I have already fired up the, the list here. So let's just run this run through this fairly quickly. Um, so this is the development section of what's, uh, what's new and planned for BC23, uh, AL version 12, um, or Business Central 2023 Wave 2. There's, there's all these version numbers. Anyway, let's get going. Ease management of system application permissions. So. We have all the system uh, system objects that we can ap as ap apply to a permission sets, but they up until now they have been one by one. So now there is some they're going to introduce some logical grouping, and um, probably going to be nice. I don't think this is really development per se. Um, so so I find this one probably miscategorized. It should be in administration or something like that. Anyway, get the AL language extension in pre-release versions on Visual Studio Code Marketplace. Yeah, you, we can do that. We That has actually, it, this one says July 1st, but but this has worked since at some point in the beginning of um, the year. So when we find the AL language extension, we can, uh, we can see that right now I'm actually on version 13 here. And this is the current pre-release, so you can switch back to release version or you can switch to uh, the the pre-release pre version. Um, so you can try out what's new, what's coming. Final references now works on trigger system methods and trigger events. So this has kind of been annoying that where, did, where, do, I, where do I do an insert? Uh, and uh, we haven't really had a good tool inside the AL world to uh, to f find usage of system functions. Um, so we get that now. This has usually been the only reason I still open up a Prism once in a while uh, because I need to figure out in a huge customization where are we inserting records into a certain table, which can be a rather difficult question to answer. Uh, because variable names and so on. But now we get an option for that. Get inlay hints in source editor for AL methods, parameters, and return types. Um, so I was here, I think. So this is this is actually the SharePoint connector of my SharePoint connector app, and this is the OCR piece. Uh, and you can see all the the, the dark gray um things that it kind of tells you <sighs> so some of them are kind of weird you see here request dot con wow go away let me let me do that again request dot context equal set context context because we have these functions in 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 al that kind of works weird that you can do it more equal or you can do it do it like this so I can also go go here, and then this is kind of the same thing. Uh, so we get that, but then we get the names of the parameters. I have not decided if I like that or not. Um, it may be handy in some cases, but it's an option you can turn it off in 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 settings if you don't like it. If I go to settings, extensions, and I find a language over here, and then somewhere down the list. Uh, inlay function. Oh, that was returns. Um, here, inlay parameter names. 
So you can do that. Hover over label variables to see string text. So just the tooltip will show you the actual context of a label in the editor. Um, I guess that's nice. Set new output folder setting for storing app files at AL project build. So right now, the app file just comes in the root folder of your extension. Uh, with this, you can have an output folder or stuff like that. That's pretty nice. Uh, and makes, in some case, uh, so we can, we, if, if you're running in a, you have your source code in kind of a read only area checked out, uh, and then you can you can output your your app somewhere else. I like that. Choose between more sampling intervals for snapshot and inclined profiler, which is kind of cool until you realize that I do believe this is only for uh, on prem. Um, maybe we can actually get some more. Sorry, I I take that back. We can actually set it now. We had it on prem four, so now we get it in the in the cloud. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool because so the reason for this is that w when when you're using a snapshot debugger, so by by uh, a specific interval in this case 100 milliseconds, uh, the the server will see what was happening now and then records what ha what's happening now. The problem is that you can you can end up in a situation where code that is get executed is never getting sliced whenever the 100 milliseconds happen get, getting a snapshot of what is the call stack right now so some functions might not fit into that and and thereby you it, it seems how can you go from function a to function c the only way that happens is, is through function b but you never get function b in your in your snapshot debugging so there's some cool things here uh, so yeah this is i like this excellent Get IntelliSense for adding variables in Visual Studio Code AL Debugger Console. You see me all the time. You type down at the uh, at the debug console. Uh, now, if I type a record name and hit dot, I get I get the field names. Uh, so I like that. That's a good a good thing. Then we just need to be able to type an expression and get that evaluated. Then then we'll all be happy. Set the default folder location for new AL projects uh, AL suggested folder instead of going to to uh, going to documents of where it's going now uh, you can have somewhere else um, kind of the repo setting you have in in visual studio visual studio studio um, Track source and build metadata on extension. So, so this is this is mostly for uh, for pipelines. So we get. Uh, I'm I'm just scrolling rapidly. So we can we can put some information in about what version of the source are we using from what repo and and who is the uh, who who is the builder in this case. The example here is ALGO. Um, so. I think that's pretty cool, and and I think I will, uh, I'll, I will employ that in uh, AL build very soon because it's probably good. Use secret text type to protect credentials and sensitive textual values from being revealed. So, it's a new data type called secret text, which is basically a text that you can't debug. You you can't, you can't see the values inside. Uh, so, so if you have like you you you're getting a, a password or authorization token or whatever, uh, you you can keep it secret so nobody can snoop uh, by by any types of debugging. Um, this is clearly something that we need to do a whole video on. So I'm I'm not gonna talk that much more about that one. Uh, document your extension with the AL doc tools for partners. I don't need to do a video on that one because there's already one. Uh, made of, if you haven't seen that one, excellent time to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel because there's always new videos coming. So uh, subscribe and you, you help me. Thanks. 
segment AL code and reducing naming conflicts with namespaces. This, this is this is the biggest one. This is multiple videos, uh, I guess. Uh, this is one that's going to impact every single one of us. Um, up till now, Business Central has worked. Everything has worked inside this one big seaside room, basically, where you know all tables exist, all pages exist, all reports, all enums, all you name it. Everything exists in the same scope, which is why all the weird stuff with prefixes on objects and all that ugliness. Um, and, and it's all due to the fact that there cannot be two things named the same from two different extensions. Because right now, version BC22 and older, it all go down into the same global namespace. So in BC23, we're getting, in, getting support for namespaces. So a namespace is a concept that has existed in other languages for, for decades. And it's kind of you defining this is this is where the, these objects, this app lives. This is the address for it. Um, I could create a name by saying Hogard. That's Hogard dot, and then I could say, okay, I I both I have apps and I have libraries, so I could go Hogard dot apps dot BCCL. Um, but then I could also go take the, my my AL compiler, for instance. Uh, because that is getting used also in, in lots of apps now that are, that needs that capability. So that might sit in hogar.tools.al compiler. Uh, and in any of these, let's say that I decide I want to, I need a table inside my, my app called customer. So I can create a table called customer. I can create a table called yield account. I can create a table called company information, anything. Because now that table actually lives inside my namespace. So in reality, behind the scene, behind the scene, the scene, wow, it's late night here. Um, that customer is no longer the, the name of, uh, of the table. It is the name in the, sh in the narrow scope of my app. But looking from the outside, the name of the table will now be dot. Uh, apps dot better customers with if that was my app dot customer that would be the that's actually the name of the table now so that would be my customer table that can be another customer table somewhere else um, so this is this is huge um, and this also raises ton of questions about object numbers um, and uh, We'll see where, where this takes us. Uh, there's some there's some interesting things in, in that area. Uh, anyway, clearly something that we're gonna do multiple videos on. Uh, and again, now I'm I'm telling you guys this is this is the videos I think needs to be made from from this list. If you disagree, let me know comments below. If there's stuff like oh hey you skipped over that one and uh, that's really interesting. Let's uh, ask, ask if uh, ask me if I want to do a video on that one, and if somebody else asks, and then you know, hit that comment or like so I can see if uh, there's something that really is interesting. Anyway, on we go. Show list of keys while working on AL code. So that's like a IntelliSense sense uh, that yeah, you can actually get the keys. That's fine. Use the AL language extension for Linux. If that's your 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 thing, you can now uh, do AL development uh, on, on Linux as you can do on a Mac. And now, so behind the scene, everything is is .NET Core, which is now just .NET, but it runs on on multiple platforms. Uh, and VS Code does is running on on Linux also. So nice. Use the built-in rich text editor to enter data. So we have had for a couple of releases a, 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 a email editor control, but, but it has been Microsoft only. So I have created, a, there's a video on the channel where I create a, a 
a HTML editor, or what you see is what you get, kind of rich text editor. Waldo has one, and there's a million of them out there. So Microsoft created one, and 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 I. So in, instead of releasing it as and control that in, uh, it's it's now it has been magic for for a couple of of releases, and now it's it's a property. Um, uh, anyway, we'll also we'll we'll do a video on that one. There's no example here. Uh, I I I kind of disagree the way this is done. Instead of just giving us the raw uh, control add-in, um, then it's packaged. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Turn off data analysis mode on pages and queries. So one of the coolest thing in PC22 was the new analysis mode on lists where you can have like Power BI Lite kind of reporting uh, uh, right inside Business Central. But there are no, were no way of turning it off on certain pages. Um, it also had the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the problem is that it could actually surface fields that were not visible for users and users did not have access to the inspection tool and suddenly analysis mode and then they could see everything uh, so so there were some some issues uh, regarding uh, regarding security on this one um, so now there's a setting so like you can turn it off uh, and i'm going to support at some point this in my advanced cloud security app where you do extra you know, field level security and stuff like that. So we're gonna make sure that you can add this uh, to a page without having to develop anything. Open Visual Studio Code from web clients to investigator or troubleshoot extensions. Um, yeah, this this is kind of a auto generate a small app, so you, so you can you can do stuff. Uh, you can run snapshot debugging and stuff like that. Um, Probably nice. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure why this was that important for Microsoft, but maybe it was. Add a new field group to an existing table. So this is still kind of weird. Uh, so we can we can add a new field in a. I'm, I'm gonna the way it's work is that a table saying can add fields by using the add last keyword in a drop down or break field group just as today however if the field group doesn't exist on the table which is being extended it will be created if multiple table extensions each add fields the field group will contain the merge result in the order that extensions are loaded first app source apps then pgs <laughs> This did not work before. I don't think it's gonna work now. Uh, I, I am, and I'm, I'm, I'm unsure what the right approach is. But, but more columns uh, is is not really a, not really a solution. I think. I think. So, so the, what I've seen is that on a specific lookup, people really want to see specific fields to make the right choice in that lookup. But the same lookup to the same table somewhere else, it might be uh, be another other fields that are important. Um, so, I, so I think that should actually be a way to override and say on this lookup, because I'm looking up something, so it's important that I see like uh, stock level. Uh, or in other cases, I need to to see dimensions, or I don't know. Um, some, yeah. Anyway, I, I let me know what you think because I, I think this is this is still broken, uh, even though it might be less broken now, or maybe it's more broken. I don't know. Add teaching tips on queries and report request pages. Logical. Um, I like teaching tips. You come into a page and it will guide you through. Uh, I, I 
do that in my apps now. Get syntax, syntax highlighting, and actually this one is not out yet. So we can see here that, that when something is out now. So this one is not out yet, but um, it probably comes in, in 23.1. Get syntax highlighting for AL in Azure DevOps. So for some reason, I don't know, probably by default that that the 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 syntax uh, the whatever text made syntax highlighting support they they snuck in an AL file somewhere and then I don't know sell business central apps through app source so it might have been running a uh, a um, a. a trial an earlier uh, a, a version of this for for a while uh, for the select few um we where you, you can monetize monetize i don't know how to say that an apps um to app source customers customers can pay with credit card on on uh, on app source and um, the problem with this right now is that if if Microsoft came with what they have to say, if, if that came three four years ago, we would have I would, yes, go for it. That's fantastic. I'm going to use that. Now everybody has kind of created their own license system, and the only way to transition into this is for this to support all the weird ver variances of uh, of licensing that that we now have uh, created. Uh, all over the place. So for my apps, I, I do a yearly fee per tenant. Doesn't matter how many environments, it doesn't matter how many users or stuff like that. Uh, and and I actually, not for most of them, you can just use the app in the, in the sandbox. Everything works and everything's good. And in, in production, you gotta pay. Um, so un unless Microsoft suddenly support a model like this, it's it's really hard because otherwise I need to change my pricing, I need to change my contracts, and, and uh, lots of it gets complicated. And the last one before we get into the code, AppSource ISV publishers can preview their AppSource app with select customers. So ever since we got AppSource. One of the steps of putting an app on, on AppSource is defining preview stuff. And you set a password and all sorts of things, but it has never worked. You can you have never been able to have a, an app in, in some sort of preview mode for, for select few. So apparently we're getting that in November 23. Actually, I think Microsoft promised that for the last version also. Um, so I don't know. So that's the list, and it's 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 long. Um, I think the most significant one is the namespaces. That's gonna change a lot of things. Um, but let's uh, let's jump let's jump into this. So I took one DLL out of the the, the compiler, and I, I ran into a, a .NET decompiler. Just you know, look what's inside. If you've seen this type of video before, you know that's how I roll. Uh, and the, the cool thing about it is that, you know, when, when you have an app, well, well, I had an app here. That was the SharePoint connector. Uh, I have an app, right? And, and you have a you specify run something. This app works on whatever runtime. Um, and uh, depending on what runtime you set, you set specific language features becomes available. And uh, those language features are therefore tagged. Any, any feature in the in the in the compiler is tagged with a certain version, uh, so so this works. And, um, and and we can just go search for that. Uh, and I've done that here. So uh, we got forty nine results. Uh, so let's look at some of them. And this is this this is not exactly how Microsoft's code is looking, uh, because some of this is 
the information is weird in here, probably due to the decompiler not knowing everything. Um, but but we we can get an impression, and what we can see is that you know here's something that is tagged with version twelve, and the first one we have is is something about the external business event, where apparently we can uh, tag an event but a version now, uh, and a version attribute, um, because that is tagged as new. Um, so that's probably actually nice to uh, avoid breaking stuff. That was version, but it's, I'm just gonna continue here. So now we're into the object parsers. I mean, this is this is the piece of code that reads an object, uh, read uh, uh, read objects, and uh, now we're reading a query um, object, and we can see here that we got there's a oh, this is a big file. <laughs> Uh, this code is struggling, uh, but we got the the teaching tips on queries, so, so nothing new there. Um, oh yeah, so on uh, on the extended what is it called the extended uh, data type property, we got a new property called barcode, so so we can display something as a barcode on screen i guess gotta try it out uh, if we set the uh, this is where we think you know you set something to mask to if this is a, a password or a secret so now we can set it to a barcode it's gonna be interesting uh what else do we have here the rich control so we know about that um allow in customization so that's a new property on on fields i guess um, so what we get uh in pc 23 is the ability that if you open the uh the personalization now you can add fields to a screen that is not originally on that page uh sort of what i do with the uh with the my simple object designer i do so much more but but this is one of the things that that i do so you can you can pull in a field that is not there by by design by added originally by the app designer just that's not visible um but there might be fields that you do not want people to put on the screen uh and um you can do that with the allowing customization never setting uh in that case, um, that field will never get onto the screen. I think Microsoft is gonna have a. Uh, I predict that Microsoft is gonna have a, a series of support calls in which people have put a, a certain fields on screen and put a value in them and thereby mess something up. And all those support calls will end up in Microsoft adding allowing customization never to a bunch of their own fields. It's a prediction uh, because I don't think that uh, I th I can I can think of lots of fields that should never get close to a user. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Uh, and here's another one: analysis mode enabled. So this is this is the setting on a, on a page where whether you can you can so on a page object whether you can whether the user can use analysis mode. So if you set that to false, they can't use it on that page. That's excellent. We got the barcode again somewhere else. Uh, we got the uh, the rich, rich text editor. Um, And now, edit edit editable editor ed, editor. I'm always saying editable, and it sounds like you can eat it, but that's just how bad my English is. Uh, but now the edit uh, property can be controlled by a client side boolean expression. So you know that that in 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 the, in the layout definition you can say visible equal, and then is visible 
uh, you can have a global or stuff like that. They're fairly simple uh, Boolean expressions. You cannot call it functions, but but use fairly simple Boolean expressions. Uh, so now we can apparently also control that one. Um, and and here's <laughs> so here's another one. Excel lay out multiple data sheets. So we got the Excel reports two two versions back. Uh, and if you remember my video on that one, I I was kind of annoyed that that it put all all, all data from all the tables in in the same sheet, and then we just had these null columns if if the column didn't exist in that table. Uh, and I love when Microsoft listens. Uh, so now we have a, a a setting saying, "Hey, set it in multiple sheets." So excellent. That is very very good. Let's continue. Time is flying. Um, so see here, here's a move to. So this is a obsolete state pending moving, moving and, and properties on, on a table said move to and move from. Um, and maybe this is part of the, so there were a on-prem thing where you could move tables from one extension to another, uh, which I never, Played with because I'm not doing on-prem, um, but but maybe this is part of part of that. Maybe this is part of something more. But clearly, it, there's you can have a from what I what I see on the screen, a table can move somewhere else. So so. Uh, whatever that is. Um, tables can move. So I'll, uh, let's see what Microsoft tells you about that one. That, uh, I think that was just the the move from. And here's more of that. So so obsolete. We suddenly we have pending move and moved. Um. So yeah, interesting. Anyway, I think that was the object parser. So now we're going into the uh, app.json um, or the app manifest. Um, and we saw the source repository commit and build by and build. So, so the, the, the information you can kind of add to a to an app so that's nice um in the company table uh, company property there's a new an id um and maybe this is due to some of the in the in not in the non-development part of one of the big things of, about these 23 is intercompany across environments uh, so maybe we need they need some sort of id on on a company or maybe or maybe this is just the 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 id id actually anyway something with id um and error information we get a few more overloads to add action uh i guess there's a description for method. So caption code unit method. We got that one already. Now we got it with the description. And add navigation action caption description. Uh, so I'm going to try that out. Uh, field ref is getting a, an is enum. Look at this. That's nice. Uh, I'm actually not sure why we need since we have. Oh, haha! <laughs> I probably I, I think I know why that. So the field type returns option on enums. So 
whether it's an option field or an enum field, if you have a field ref to a field, it will always return option. Uh, so I guess is enum is a way not to break the other thing and still figure out that this is an enum. I don't know. Uh, there's probably a good reason why they added that one. Okay, so now we're getting into a bunch of stuff on the HTTP client. You can see HTTP client class, con HTTP content, HTTP TTP headers. Um, and there's a new add certificate function. There's a new use Windows authentication function. That's also quite interesting, by the way. Um, yeah. yeah, interesting. Uh, on the content, we got support for secret text. So right from secret text, uh, I think the next one is output secret text uh, type in, in, in read as. And the last one is, is secret content. Um, so support for that, that's probably, let's see. Uh, then the header, we got a, a new overload on, on add with secret text instead of text. We got a new try without, try add without validation, also with secret text instead of text. Um, get secret values, uh, get secret values and contain secrets. So this is all for secret text support. Uh, AL get request UI with a secret text as parameter. Uh, the same here. Uh, notification. And the same thing, and an action, uh, the action, add action overload to a notification with the description. See, oh, we almost two guys. Let's see if we can keep this under 45 minutes. Um, more secret text. Oh, this is a secret text. Okay, we have done secret text. System class type. Uh, okay, we need to, this is. Um, uh, this is probably clear. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is... So behind the scene, AL is an ugly language. No, but but it kind of is. Uh, and and that means that a lot of functions like clear takes a bunch of parameters, a bunch of different uh, types. Uh, yeah, it was clear, sorry, there. So now we need to make sure that we... And the AL compiler needs to make sure that it can also clear a secret text. So, so there needs to be a new overload to clear also. Um, uh, set base load fields. Set load fields, set base load fields. Um, is that new? Our fields loaded. Huh, if you know, um, set base load fields. I'm going to test that. I actually can't remember that. And the last thing here, and now we are at the bottom of the list. We got variant now has an is list is dictionary. So apparently you can now, I know maybe you could do that over here. I mean, I've never tried. Uh, then you can pass a, a list or dictionary through a variant. Um, and now we can at least test for it. Um, so that is, that's, that's the first time you see, if, if you can stand on my scrolling, that most of the variant stuff has been there from day one. Um, but is data classification came in no that's no that also came in version eight deprecated use is data classification oh type is out oh okay. anyway i'm getting a sidetrack here um 
that's all we didn't really see here name the, the whole namespace thing is not tagged this way because it's not really reading it is but it's reading the source differently um so i think the name i've one of the first videos that are coming out will be on namespace because i find it very interesting and uh, it also will have a big impact because what's what's happening right now i'm not looking at the time what's happening right now is that if in p23 you can load a non namespace uh, so microsoft has namespaced most of their app uh, this is the weird thing most of the base app in in preview version is namespace but there's still stuff that is sitting outside the namespace um but if if you load an app without a namespace it will work until it breaks uh, and what do i mean by that is that if there is no namespace we will kind of fall back to a, a pseudo global namespace make sure there's no conflicts anywhere um but that will break at some point uh so this is a, this is a change that i think we will end up having to do all of us fairly quickly i suspect and this is just me guessing that there will come a um there will be a way to upgrade an existing app to namespace um there will uh, there will be a uh, a friendly suggestion to uh, to 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 get your app source apps namespaced uh, and then suddenly one day when you submit to app source your your submission will be uh, be rejected because there's no namespace um it's just me guessing but but i i'm i'm pretty sure that that this needs to be done and this is i think this is a a case where it's more stick than carrot um and you know surprise me microsoft uh anyway i will not be affected it because i will as soon as i can make sure that all my apps are on namespaces because i think it's cool it's cool anyway i hope you are still hydrated and if you have a um, have the need for for more al uh, you know that this video is for you selected by the almighty algorithm go check it out i'll see you there take care bye